Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Beach Lifestyle Radio Show on the Simply G Media Network. Again, you can go to simplyg.com, simplyg.com. For more information on G.J. Reynolds, the playful and powerful warrior, or go to my website, toldtutor.net, Twitter, Told Tutor Neil S. Haley, Facebook. And I want to welcome the program, the host of the show, G.J. Reynolds. And, G., I know you're so excited about our guest today. I'm definitely excited. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's got a vast um, wealth of knowledge, and uh, I've learned a lot from him in, in the couple of years that I've known him. And, and uh, he actually spoke it, um, you know, with all of our leaders uh, about two years ago. And, uh, you know, he was uh, just a great guy. And um, one of the things that caught my, you know, caught my attention is that he was mentored by Napoleon Hill, you know, firsthand. And, I, and after after he spoke, I said, i got to go meet the man that was mentored by Napoleon Hill. Because as uh, anyone who listens to the show knows that I'm a big Napoleon Hill fan and I've become a great fan of our guest. And uh, he's written several books uh, that sold over two million copies. He's got audio CDs. He posts a blog, and you know he's continually putting out great information, especially in the selling world. And uh, you know he explains selling the way it really is versus the way he feels people think it is. And uh, that was another thing that, that really caught my eye. He's also married to a lovely lady by the name of Gigi. She's awesome. And so please welcome to the show. Uh, my friend and super super salesman and entrepreneur Ben Gay the Third. How you doing, Ben? How you doing, G and Neil? Thank you very much. Just love the kind words. GJ is gives the best introductions, and I'm going to tell you right now, he's my mentor of introductions because once I started to hear his, I had to top him at times. So we're kind of go back and forth in introductions when we do interviews, and the better we get, the more we introduce people. But we're really excited to have you on the show, and I, I think that one of the themes of today's show is really going to be mentorship in the way that how you were mentored to be where you are today. So... Again, can you share with us who you think have been your greatest mentors in your career to be successful today? Well, I've been blessed with a lot of them, and, and some didn't know they were mentors. I've, I've learned a lot from street people, but the famous people that people enjoy hearing about, I can run down a list with you. Paul Meyer at SMI, uh, Success Motivation Institute. Paul was a friend. And uh, although he was selling sales training material, he bought my sales training material, the closures, to train his people, which I always found mildly amusing. But Paul was a mentor to me. Larry Wilson of the Wilson Learning Institute, he passed away just recently, he was a good friend and mentor. Uh, some of these names, you know, people will hear me talking about them, and then they wonder if I'm 100 years old. Uh, I was blessed in that I got into a a very exciting business that uh, carried me around the world and made me wealthy when I was 22, starting when I was 22. And uh, so most of the people that I knew were grown men, if not with gray in their hair, Uh, but I stepped onto a a rocket ship and it took off just as, as I got there. And with that rocket ship came Dr. Napoleon Hill. He was my personal mentor the last two or three years of his life. Earl Nightingale, uh, one of the great voices of our time and a great modern thinker was a dear friend of mine and the voice of several of our companies. Sales training, I was trained specifically by J. Douglas Edwards, went on to, after he passed, write a book for his family called Sales Closing Power, which is still available, taken from, it's true to his seminar teachings. Uh, so when I say I wrote it, I probably, the closer would be edited it, uh, cleaned it up. Things spoken casually from the stage don't necessarily read well. So that was my contribution to Sales Closing Power, the book. You get it on eBay uh, today. Uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale was a friend and mentor. Dr. Maxwell Maltz, uh, Merle Fraser. Uh, one of the great thinkers of our time, Og Mandino, Fred Herman, Bill Gold, I could go on and on and on. But they came in the package. September 15, 1965, I joined a business with another unknown salesperson who was about 16 years older than I was at the time, and uh, named Zig Ziglar. Zig and I joined the same business in the same office on the same day under the same sponsor. And it was good to, to both of us. But with that, almost everybody that was the company was called Holiday Magic. It was a cosmetic company. And then we had several other companies that used exactly the same marketing plan. 
uh, but sold motor oil additives and vitamins and home care cleaning products and so on. So five major companies came under the holiday magic umbrella, and as a result, if you were anybody in selling at the time, you were probably involved in some way with Holiday Magic, and I just got to stand there and meet a lot of fine people, and I went on to be president of the company. So most of the people I mentioned helped me in the early days and in the, in the latter days also, but they also worked for me by the time the dust settled. So interesting, Ben, to hear about that because, again, you're talking about all these mentors that help lead you to where you are today. And as my co-host, G.J. Reynolds, the founder of Beach Lifestyle, has told me many times, his mentors, uh, John Wooden, uh, again, Dale Brown, all these different people that have mentored him in his career to where he is today. Gee, you wouldn't be there if you didn't have those great people that guided you to where you are in your entrepreneurship as an entrepreneur, right, G? Absolutely, and, and as, as many of our listeners have heard over and over, is that you become who you surround yourself with. And uh, I was fortunate to learn at an early age, um, you know, you know, find a, find a good coach or mentor that's going where you're going or, or it's gone where you choose to go, and they can help you maneuver. And what I've also learned, and Ben's a great example of, um, you know, sharing his, his wealth of knowledge with others. And, um, you know, most mentors are willing, especially the ones that have been successful and, and, and have done it, they're very um, gifted at, at giving back. And that they see that as part of their their uh, platform is to give back and to teach others. And, and I was definitely blessed to uh, be um, exposed to some great mentors that were, you know, uh, that have become my friends and, and, uh, you know, Ben was doing the same thing. And so it's, it's very key. Surround yourself with the right people, find a great coach and mentor, and that makes some things a lot easier. Do you agree with that, Ben? Absolutely. And totally agree with it. If nothing else, uh, besides all the obvious, um, advantages of a good mentor, and you got to be careful who you follow. You can, you can wander off into the wilderness uh, one of the people when I was teaching at San Quentin, uh, my people builders program that I met there was Charlie Manson. I spent about nine hours with him in three different uh, sessions in his cell in the adjustment center. And there's an example of someone who was a, a wonderful leader and motivator and inspirer. He had one book in his cell, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. He said it was his Bible. But if you followed Charlie Manson, you found yourself at murder scenes and on death row and, and uh, so on. So you got to be careful who you follow. Uh, as Earl uh, Nightingale was fond of saying, he used to say, Benjamin, check your references. Always check your references. Make sure you know where you are, who you're with, what's going on, and then keep rechecking. It's not a one-time thing. Uh, he used to give the example of the sailor who, if he didn't check his references and you know shoot the stars and do all the things you do to stay on course, could be thousands of miles away from where he intended to be. So, say, and, and even with the with the great ones, you got to do some filtering. I won't name names, but as I'm thinking of the list of people I, I just went through, I, I I am acutely aware that some of them were very good for me in one uh, phase of my life or one sphere of uh, information and knowledge, but not necessarily all of them. And uh, so you have to uh, check that, too. I was reading uh, the other day, G, uh, from the Playful and Powerful Warrior Within You, a book I think you're familiar with since you wrote it. And uh, uh, I was reading that and thinking that we're going to be talking about mentorship, but because you wrote that book, and I've read it several times, uh, you're a mentor to me. And uh, that, I think that's one of the secrets is you can fall into the guru trap of uh, being a mentor to people to the point that you forget you still need mentoring yourself. At least I do. So I, uh, I have people, uh, Merle Fraser I mentioned earlier, uh, a wonderful, wonderful gentleman who was kind enough to take me under his wing in the early days. He was one of those people who was 15, 16 years older than I am. And you know, at 22, with no sales experience, people like Merle were really important to me. Well, I still check with Merle. I called him last week. 
I to uh, run something by him, something I was thinking about doing and wasn't real sure about and so on. And so I went back to that well again, and I've been going to the Merle Fraser well for 47 years wow. since I first met him. And uh, unfortunately, my list is getting of, of the early mentors, the earlier and older mentors of mine. Uh, the list is rapidly shrinking. So <laughs> when I called Will, I was, I was thrilled to hear him answer the phone. Uh, the uh, but and and fortunately through the the benefit of uh, audio and the internet and so on, anytime I want to know what Earl Nightingale said about something, it's readily available. It's in my bookcase. I have the original record that was given to me on September fifteenth, nineteen sixty five, um, and I can I can check with that. I listened to the strangest secret, the greatest non-entertainment recording ever made in the history of mankind. If your listeners don't have it, get it. Earl Nightingale's The Strangest Secret. I listen and or watch it. I have it on DVD also uh, once a month and have for 40 some odd years. In the early days, I listened to it every day, so I don't know how many times that comes to, but hundreds, probably thousands of times I have listened to that message to beat it into my head. Um, and when I'm uh, want to refresh myself, uh, something with selling. Uh, I go to the Closers series, even though I wrote um, much of it, edited all of it, and published all of it. I go back to the Closers series and recheck it. I find things that I wrote that seem new to me because time has changed, I'm a different person, etc. Same thing with uh, Doug Edwards' book, Sales Closing Power. Uh, I was reading it yesterday afternoon in anticipation of this interview. So Doug reached out from wherever he is today and taught me again. Wow. So it's not that you don't have to, you don't have to go find brand new ones every few minutes. The wisdom of the universe has been written down, recorded, and videoed in many cases, and it's available to everybody. Ben, I, I, I'm, I'm amazed talking about the UNG in that way and to hear about what you uh, – look back as a student all the time. GJ, I see that all the time, where GJ's constantly studying what his mentors have done, looking back, always willing to learn. And I think, Ben, that's the, the big thing about mentorship is definitely uh, to be a mentor or to be mentored, you have to be willing to learn, and that sometimes the person that's the being taught someday will mentor others. And I could see through what I've learned from GJ, I'll be mentoring many people from, especially what I've learned from his book and being able to be able to be talking to him every day and just grabbing those things and grabbing that motivation and see how he motivates people. So tell me specifically how Napoleon Hill mentored you. Because, again, uh, the situation is I don't know where you were in your career, Ben, at that point when Napoleon Hill, because Napoleon Hill for GJ is one of the amazing, most amazing people uh that he's ever talked about. He said, it's amazing his books and how he's able to inspire people and learn from the greatest uh, entrepreneur minds of, of the, uh, of the 20th century. Now tell me specifically uh, how you met Napoleon and, and how he's mentored you. Well, uh, first of all, on the day I joined holiday magic, Bill Dempsey, my sponsor gave me the scratchy old record he had, of uh, Doug Edwards, uh, excuse me, of, of Earl Nightingale's The Strange Secret, and he gave me an old beat-up copy, paperback, of uh, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Dr. Hill. And the, the record I listened to that night when I got home and it hit me the book that I took a while to get to because I was so smart I didn't figure I had to read stuff like that. Uh, big mistake on my part. Fast forward, uh, Oh, three years or so. Now I'm, instead of just a, a young distributor starting out with Holiday Magic with my $91.42 investment, I'm now president of the company. And uh, sort of a cute story, Bill Patrick, William Penn Patrick, the uh, owner of the company and the chairman of the board, um, was forever dragging people into my office and saying, uh, this is an old friend of mine, set up a company around them. Uh, say, uh, State Power was a motor oil added, for instance. A friend of his had come up with this product. Bill dragged him in my office and said, set up a company. Well, it turned into a, be a rather large company, rather successful. We just took the Holiday Magic marketing plan, laid it on that company's products. Um, and that, it happened numerous times to the point I used to tell Bill, whenever I see you coming down the 
hallway with somebody I don't recognize, I feel like turning and running for fear I'm going to have to start another company around some friend of yours who may or may not have a good idea. So I'm sitting in my office one day, the door opens, and uh, there stands Bill Patrick with an elderly gentleman, and my first reaction was, oh, no, here's somebody from Bill's past, and I'm going to have to build a company around whatever his goofy idea is. So I got up, went over, I introduced myself. I said, hi, I'm Ben Gay. How are you? And he said, I'm Dr. Napoleon Hill. You call me Nappy, which I never could do. I didn't, I didn't say the word Nappy until Dr. Hill had died. It wouldn't come out of my mouth. And so I was called him Dr. Hill or Dr. or nothing, but never Nappy. And uh, Bill, it was August 22nd, and I forget what year it was. It was in the late 60s, I think. I know, in the late 60s, uh, Bill said, I have a uh, birthday present for you. And I said, what's that? He said, you just met him. I've hired Dr. Hill to work specifically for you, no other duties. He was living in South Carolina and continued to live there, so most of our mentoring was by phone, mail, and or I would fly in. And occasionally he would come out or come to one of our rallies or something. And uh, he said, here's the deal. Nothing you say to Dr. Hill will ever be passed on to me. I want you to have one person you can go to talk openly. I know you'll get sound advice, and you won't have to, to uh, uh, live in fear of your job or showing weakness or whatever. Dr. Hill is your personal coach. You didn't use the word coach because that wasn't uh, in the vernacular at the time, but your personal mentor, uh, I'll call it coach now, and he will be available to you whenever you want and often as you want and whatever. He's yours. And Bill Turner walked away and left me there with Dr. Hill. Took him in my office. We went and had lunch. We became good buddies. Um, he was an, physically an older, frail man on a cane. But his mind, to the last time I talked to him a few, uh, oh, few months before he died, I'd left the company by then, and so no one was paying Dr. Hill anymore. But the last time I talked to him, mentally, he was as sharp as ever. I'll tell you how, the, how you just reminded me of something, if, you, if your listeners uh, enjoy sort of the history of the, of the movement. Uh, Dr. Hill wrote uh, Think and Grow Rich. And frankly, it didn't tell you, it wasn't a bombastic bestseller right off the bat. But another gentleman I met, Morris Pickus, who I bought a company from called the Personnel Institute, Morris Pickus called on W. Clement Stone one day and his sort of greeting gift, you know, hi, glad to meet you, here's a book I brought for you, uh, handed him Dr. Hill's book, uh, Think and Grow Rich. That was the first time Clement Stone had ever read the book, ever heard of the book. But he read it and liked it, Earl Nightingale says that he got the idea for The Strangest Secret while reading uh, Think and Grow Rich. So there's a little tight circle there. But Clem Stone read the book, loved it, tracked down Dr. Hill, made uh, all of his salespeople. He ran combined insurance companies over the years. He probably had millions of agents, hundreds of thousands at any given time. It was a huge operation. He made all of his agents buy and read uh, Think and Grow Rich rescuing the book and Dr. Hill from relative obscurity. Uh, and maybe we wouldn't be talking about him or the book today had it not been for Clem Stone and had it not been that Morris Pickus, my business partner, gave Stone a copy of the book years before I met him. So it's funny how it sort of, when I hear young people in the business talk about it, they'll say, well, Mr. Gay, you know, I heard so-and-so say something the other day, and many times I just smile inwardly because that isn't where the information they're quoting comes from. It wasn't from their 23-year-old leader in the XYZ MLM company or whatever. It came from people that I know. I mean, oh. Earl Nightingale ate in my home. I ate in his home. We visited together, the same with Dr. Hill, the same with Paul Myers and uh, Doug Edwards and all of them. So I, I, I think the blessing in, in my life, my mom and dad taught me to, to meet interesting people. It's sort of a hobby of mine. And uh, when you have that built into you and you fall into a nest of, of very famous thinkers of their day, I was just doubly blessed. Uh, 
I, I achieved a lot through my own hard work and so on, but I'll tell you, had it not been for the chance encounters, uh, getting pulled into holiday magic and being given uh, Earl's record and, and Dr. Hill's book, uh, I, I doubt we'd be talking today. I was selling food as a food broker for my father, and I'd probably be, the dad's long gone, I'd probably be in the, in the stages of running that business. But instead, because of seeking out mentors, meeting interesting people, going out of my way to uh, bring them into my circle. I've traveled all over the world. I've met kings and queens. And, and uh, in fact, I was just writing a thing on Facebook the other day. I was in a drag race with the king of Norway uh, in a chance encounter at a traffic light with a friend of mine, Derek Broughton, who's from Norway, lives there in Oslo. Um, so I, you don't know many people, I assure you, who drag race with <laughs> kings. And uh, but it, it's because uh, you know that little silly thing in Oslo one day was because of Dr. Hill and Clem Stone and, and uh, uh, Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, great character and so on. And they were not sought out by accident. So if people want to take a, a lesson from Ben Gay today. Uh, it would be to aggressively don't wait for it to happen. Aggressively seek out successful people and get close to them and take notes. Um, as uh, Bill Patrick used to say, somebody else is now giving credit for it, but success leaves clues. Uh, there, there are reasons people are successful and there are reasons that people fail and you can be inspired and learn from one and at least get a warning from the others. Many of my mentors have been negative mentors, Charlie Manson being one of them. Yes. Uh, but in in that same period of time, when I was uh, working or talking with Charlie, uh, trying to figure him out, I was also the attitude coach for the astronauts of Apollo 15, 16, and 17. So on the positive side, my other mentors were highly successful uh, scientists and test pilots and so on, and that wasn't by accident either. I sought them out. I had a contact. I got in tight with them. I taught at San Quentin for five years, not by accident. I got in tight with the warden at a social gathering and sold him on my program and uh, met some of the most fascinating people I've ever met, good and bad, as a result of that. So I, to me, it's a constant, and search isn't over. I mean, I, yes. I hope I meet somebody terribly interesting today. Well, it, uh, you definitely sound like GJ. GJ always goes out and searches out after people that he wants to meet to hopefully be able to transform people's lives. GJ and I were having that dialogue today about who he wants to meet next because he really believes that God has a plan for him in that person. Isn't that true, GJ? It's like constantly you're looking at people who you can help or also together can make a huge difference. Yes, and and uh, you know, um, I, you know, Ben said it so beautifully. And, and and before I say anything else, is I've got I've got the goosebumps, the god bumps going the whole time you're speaking, Ben. And and uh, you know, you you hit it right on the head. Aggressively seek out a positive mentor, role model, and and then also constantly, you know. Um, Check references and take reference and and validate the reference and and uh, every good mentor that I've had and every good coach, you know, have all said the same thing and and um, and then the other thing that comes to mind is you know uh, Coach John Wooden said it's what you do after you know it all. Well, <laughs> obviously we never know it all, and uh, you know every great mentor and every great coach are great students. And, um, you know, I, I've just learned to do that. And, and obviously we're having this interview because, you know, after you spoke, I said, I got to meet this guy. And uh, I remember going out and meeting you and, and uh, your wife, Gigi, and I was just like, you know, I just, you know, the, the realness and the, the willingness to share. And, and I knew right then we were going to become friends. And, and uh, you know, so I you know, read, read your book, The Closers, and I'm, I'm honored that I have a signed copy and, and I'm honored that you're, you know, you read my book and and have been, you know, learned something from it. So I'm very humbled by that, and and it just goes to show that, you know, the great great teachers are great students, and and uh, great students have the ability to become great teachers, and and you've been able to do that. And you know, I was going to one of the questions I was asking, you know, what are the top three 
uh, you know, from that mentorship, you know, to our listeners, and what would be the top three things you'd like them to learn? And you've, you've touched on some of them, uh, but going back to the top three that you see that, um, you know, somebody that's, you know, definitely getting out, uh, out in the workforce, becoming an entrepreneur, looking to, to better themselves, what would be your three or top, you know, top three? And I know that it's probably difficult, but, you know, what are your top three um, things of advice for our listeners? Well, it is probably the top 300, but I, <laughs> since, you asked, since you asked for three, I'll, I'll give you three that just popped to the top of my head. Uh, in uh, uh, Take and Grow Rich, uh, Dr. Hill wrote something very close to the phrase that uh, Earl became famous for, you become what you think about. So I would say, first of all, be very careful who you're around and what's influencing you. And if you're around a bad influence, be consciously aware that that's a bad influence and that's what you're learning what not to be. Because, number one on your list of three, is you truly do become what you think about and who you're around. Uh, Bill Patrick taught me years ago that uh, he said, watch your associations because you're going to become the composite average of the five or ten people you spend the most time around. And for good and bad, he's, he was right. He was right after the fact because as a teenager, I, uh, I wasn't a, a total hellion, but I ran with a group of people that were more interested in having a good time than becoming a doctor. And we had a good time, and none of us are doctors. So <laughs> it, it worked, good or bad, it worked. You truly do become what you think about, so control your thoughts. Two, I would say to have uh, goals, and most people don't understand goals. And they, and as soon as in a seminar I say you got to have goals, I see the eyes roll. Oh, he's going to tell me I got to have goals, like the last fifteen hundred people have told me. Well, it's true, but it's not. I want to be happy. That's a condition, not a goal. It's a byproduct of, of perhaps achieving some goals. Goals to be attainable must be specific. Uh, if let's say it's a money goal, I want to have a million dollars. Let's say, or I, I, I'll give you one. Let's, let's, it happened to me the first time I decided I wanted to make a million dollars in a year. And uh, the first time I decided to, I didn't do it because it was about I made the the, the uh, pledge or the resolution on New Year's Day one year, and about June I realized I hadn't done half of it. I hadn't done anywhere near half of it, so I, I knew I couldn't do it in the rest of the half year uh, that, was, that was left. So I forgot about it and said, well, I'll, I'll start it over again in January. And then my father reminded me of, of uh, how he taught me to play golf and the way good golfers play it. I don't play anymore. The way good golfers play it. It's not one big tournament. It's not one round. It's not even one hole. It's every single stroke is a separate tournament. You do that one the very best that you can. So goals need to be specific. When I wanted to make a million dollars, I figured, well, what, how much is that? It didn't work when I just had it as a general goal and was six months into it and nowhere near achieving it. But then I figured out that to make a million dollars in a year, you had to make $2,739 and some odd cents every day, seven days a week. Now, that sort of clarified my thinking. I, I rounded it up to 2800 to make it easier. And the thing I do with goals there, they must be specific. That's specific. Measurable, the one I just gave you, is certainly measurable. And attainable, in the field of commission selling, it is attainable. Many, many, many of us have achieved it over the years. And thousands or millions more to come over the coming years will achieve it. So a, a money goal like that is specific, measurable, and attainable. But the trick is that breakdown. Uh, every day is a separate day, just like every stroke in a match of golf, a round of golf, is a separate tournament. I'll give you an example. I did a seminar. In fact, it was the, the same day we were drag racing with the King of Norway. I did a series of seminars in Norway for a good friend of mine. Ten seminars. They paid my full speaking fee, 9500 per talk, for each of the ten seminars. They bought, I'm making up numbers because I forget, but Twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars worth of books in advance were sent over to them. And at the end of the ten days, they were so pleased with what I did at the, at the going away dinner. They rewarded me with, um, I think it was four percent. It might have been three percent, three or four percent of a company that was 
publicly traded on the European Stock Exchange, and my 3 or 4% equaled, on the day they gave it to me, $14 million. And that's in a 10-day period. So a friend of mine, hearing about that, said, well, the next day, well, the pressure was off. And I said, no, it wasn't off. The next day, I needed to make $2,800 to stay on my target. Um, but you already made all that money. Yeah, but that's how you get sloppy. And by the same token, there are days when I don't make 2800 In fact, there are days when I don't make anything. The next day when I get up, I don't have to make 5600 though. I go back to 2800 every day, 2800 2800 2800 Some days are more, some days are less, but they tend to add up. So you become what you think about and who you hang out with, have specific, measurable, attainable goals, not generalities of happiness and, and so on. Uh, and then third, I guess, along this line would be persistence. Is over and over and over again you get knocked down or you don't achieve exactly what you wanted to achieve that day, week, month, year, or whatever. But persistence, you just keep coming back. Woody Allen, I think it was, said 95% of success and life was just showing up. <laughs> um, and any of the people I know who have not done as well as they had hoped quit. Uh, many people that I know, myself included, have suffered devastating setbacks. But we have a tendency in that little crowd to persist, to come back and help one another come back and to remind one another, get around a group of people that will tell you the truth and get some friends who will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And that tends to be sort of hard to lie to somebody who knows exactly how much you're supposed to make today and whether or not you've done anything to make that a, a reality. So you become what you think about, specific, measurable, attainable goals, and persistence, unrelenting persistence. Ben, I'm jotting down information right now and saying, oh, my gosh, I, I am just amazed at those three things. Because, again, you're setting those attainable goals. You surround yourself, as G.J. talked about, with those right people, not the people that are going to bring you down. And last but not least, one of the things I have really, so far as a green entrepreneur, has always said is I'm persistent. I'm never going to give up. Till I, till I get, go ahead and attain that. And I think that that's the key thing. And when I fall, I know I'm going to come back harder than ever, stronger than ever the next day. Even though it was a rough day, next day you come back. And I hope to be as successful as both of the people I ha- I'm on the phone with. And I'm just learning from both of you as I've been talking. So one thing we do on this show, is Ben, is we, and I can't believe we're close to running out of time. It's amazing, our conversation. We definitely want to have you back on and talk about other specific topics. But, Ben, where... Uh, uh, first of all, what is your next 90-day goal? Where do you see yourself in the next 90 days? Uh, do you have a new 90-day goal? And last but not least, uh, information on you. Well, I, I, if I'd known you were going to ask that question, Neil, I would have uh, created something to tell you because I like to be responsive in an interview. But my 90-day goal is 90 separate goals, pretty much like I just laid out. You know, I've been all over the world. Uh, if I want a trip to uh, Hawaii, I give it to the next person I saw on the street. I don't, I don't want to go. I've been there, seen that. It's nice. Uh, I'll, I'll go there for business purposes and then spend an extra few days or what have you. So I, I pretty much uh, achieved those things that were important to me. I spend most of my days now, my uh, lovely wife, Gigi, who G has met, uh, they almost share a name. Uh, my lovely wife, Gigi, is 10 years younger than I am, and women tend to live about 10 years longer than men, so that's about 20 years that I probably won't be around that she still will be. So I devote uh, the goals that we've discussed cover a whole lot of ground for me and and overlap and and take care of a lot of other goals. But what most of my life is devoted to now is making sure that DG is where she ought to be financially, spiritually, mentally. Uh, We live in a little town of Placerville, California. Uh, Her family's been here for 100 years. This is probably not the place I would live if I were loose and fancy free. I'd probably be in San Francisco, where we spend a lot of time. I love San Francisco, as does Gigi. But I want her surrounded by the people that know her and love her, so that means we will always maintain a home in Placerville, no matter where we travel or what we do or where we live. So my goals are more Gigi-oriented now. 
and and other younger members of our family. We have uh, you know, one of our sons passed, who was killed in a traffic accident. The other two are still around. They're important to me. Their uh, offspring to come are important to me. So I, I, I'm sort of past worrying about them gay, and uh, I spend my time working for the benefit of Gigi and and other uh, close friends and family members. And work we can find info on you, Ben. I'm very sorry, I didn't. Well, your hear website, you. your website, and more where we can learn more about Ben Gay. Yes, sure. Yeah, uh, if anyone's listening who's interested in in uh, contacting me or or uh, uh, having uh, further information, I would suggest three things. One, go to link. LinkedIn and look up Ben Gay the Third. You'll see my credentials there. Uh, I'm not bragging, but they're reasonably substantial. Uh, become a friend on Facebook. Love to communicate with people. I, that's how I spend uh, idle time between phone calls or between writing assignments or what have you. And as a gift, go to bfg3.com. www of course. B is in Ben, F is in Frank, G is in Gay, the number three dot com. A little uh, again I, while you're there, look around. You might pick up some of the things I recommend. The closures series, uh, all of it or part of it, or get started with it if you're in selling. Uh, it's the Bible, the sales training industry, the most popular, most powerful books ever written on selling. And uh, uh, but when you go there, a little box will drop down. If they'll put in their name and email, won't bug you. I send out something maybe once a month, but I'll give you a all of your listeners a free subscription to the Closers Update uh, newsletter and the Closers uh, uh, Alert newsletter is what it sounds like. The alerts are things that I think people in selling ought to know about, whether I have a hand in them or not. And uh, a lifetime subscription to the Closers Teletraining Seminars. That's where I get on the phone with uh, top professional salespeople, master closers that I've known and, and worked with. And just like we're doing now, let people listen in on the calls. People have told me over the years, well, I'd give anything in the world uh, if uh, I could hear you and Hugh Harris, one of the great salesmen who ever lived in Atlanta, if I could just hear you chat. So I got good news for you. That's CD number one in the closure cell training. It's Hugh Harris and me talking. So Facebook, LinkedIn, www.bfg3.com, and I would love to be in touch with you folks. Ben, I know GJ has to, wants to say something to you before we say goodbye, so I'm going to go to GJ. And I, I, like you said, you have those goosebumps, GJ, and I do as well. And uh, what a wealth of knowledge we had on for this show, didn't we? G, didn't we have the wealth of knowledge on the, of from this guest? Mm-hmm. Yes, I've, I've, absolutely, and I've been excited for this interview and uh, for some time, and I'm glad uh, you were able to, to make the interview, Ben, and, and I hopefully can do, do this uh, a lot more. Um, and for the listeners, yeah, definitely go to BFG3, BFG3, the number 3.com. Uh, definitely, if you're, if you're uh, interested in personal growth and developments, you need to get some of Ben's um, products. Uh, the closer series is definitely fantastic for anybody. If you're if you're selling anything, including yourself, um, whichever one does, you know, people when they say they're not selling, well, you're always selling yourself, and and uh, it's a great book, and uh, you know, it's it's honest, truthful, uh, great information, and it's it's an easy read as well, and I know everybody will enjoy it. Again, Ben, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to. Um, um, speaking with you soon. I set a new goal. Is that one of my goals is to go to San Francisco and be the, spend a week there with my wife and just be tourists. And now I know who's going to be my tour tour guide. You and Gigi. So say hi to Gigi and you All right. So, so again, thanks a lot. I mean, we we could spend out the whole afternoon. So I, I I'm just. Um, oh. I'm, I'm just really excited that uh, you came on the show. So thanks a lot, and let me turn back over to you, Neil. All right, well, Ben, thanks again for being on the show. Again, I'm going to have to go back and listen to this over and over again because when I'm the host and also a producer, I have to listen to the sound quality as well, Ben. So I want to go and jot down all the information, and I recommend our listeners do the same thing and re-listen to this podcast over and over to pick out these tidbits because if you choose a couple of these action plans that Ben talked about, 
you're going to increase your business, you're going to increase your worth, and you're going to cre- and you're going to change and transform your life in so many ways. And same with some of the things that are in GJ's book. So thanks again for calling, Ben. Thank you. All right, take care. All right, you're listening to the Beach Lifestyle Radio Show, powered by the Simply G Media Network, and we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 